Hello, integrated math one. Welcome to topic one. Pardon me, I'm trying to again. Module one, topic one, lesson two. But we're doing the first half of it today. We'll save the other half of it for next time. So we're going to start going through activity 2.1 today. We are on page M1-101, so page 101. If you're curious as to where we went, that's where we are. So we are starting to look at some new definitions. So you're going to have some new words pop up today. You're going to have some new terms come along that you haven't seen before. That's not a bad thing. So we were looking at patterns and we were finding um, what the patterns were and guessing the next terms. But we ended off our getting started activity by grouping them, right? By looking at ways that we can group these sequences. What do the sequences have in common? All that kind of stuff. So for some sequences, you can describe the pattern as adding a constant to each term. You keep adding the same thing, adding a constant number, adding the same thing over and over again. Um, for other sequences, you can describe the pattern as multiplying each term. Um, pardon me, multiplying each term by a constant to determine the next term. So again, multiplying by the same thing over and over and over again. Still, there are other sequences, of course, that we noticed that couldn't be described either way. So this is one way that we can group our sequences. So what this leads us to is a couple of important things. And again, you've got some words that are in bold here, so they feel kind of important and want to make sure that we know what they are. So the first thing is this, an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the difference between any two consecutive terms is constant. Now, when we say two consecutive terms, we just mean two terms that are right next to each other. Consecutive means they're right next to each other. So when I'm talking two consecutive terms, I'm just talking here's one, here's the next one. That's where we're going. In other words, it is a sequence of numbers in which a constant is added to each term to produce the next term. So we have some constant number, the same number that we're adding over and over and over and over again. We have a name for this constant. This constant number that's getting added over and over and over again to get the next terms is called the common difference. The common difference is typically represented by the variable D. I'm not going to be surprised there. It's a common difference. So we use a D as our variable for that. Now, the common difference matters, all right? The common difference if a sequence is positive, if the same positive number is added to each term to produce the next term. The common difference of a sequence is negative if the same negative number is added to produce the next term. Um, let me see if I can break it down for you. If you're adding the same number over and over and over again, your common difference will be positive. If you're subtracting the same number over and over again, because remember, adding a negative number is the same thing as subtracting a number, right? You remember that? So if we're subtracting the same number over and over and over again, that means then that we are dealing with a negative number for our common difference, all right? Because if you recall, when you add a negative number, it's the same thing as subtracting a positive one. That's the same. So with this in mind, I'm going to show you a lovely sequence that demonstrates this so well. So consider the sequence shown, 11, 9, 7, 5. It looks like I am subtracting 2 every single time. Now, for our purposes, we now know that instead of thinking of it as subtracting 2, we're going to think of it as adding a negative 2, okay? So the pattern is to add the same negative number, negative 2, to each term to determine the next term. So for 11, I had to add a negative 2 to get 9. For uh, the next one, I had to add a negative 2 to get 7. And then I added a negative 2 to get 5. You get the idea, right? So this sequence would be arithmetic because I'm adding the same thing over and over and over again. I keep adding that negative 2. So the sequence is arithmetic. And the common difference is negative 2, because that is what I keep adding every single time. So let's suppose, 
I've got some supposes for you. So suppose a sequence has the same starting number as this lovely sequence in the worked example. So we're going to start with 11. But its common difference is now 4. Okay. Think about how the pattern would change. You don't have to get too specific, but just how would the pattern change? Hit pause, write that down. How would the pattern change? And then hit play when you're ready to keep going. Well, when we were adding the negative 2, our sequence was decreasing, wasn't it? But if my common difference is now 4, if I'm adding a positive 4, then my sequence is now going to increase by 4. So instead of decreasing by 2, my sequence is now going to increase by 4. So it would definitely be a different pattern, wouldn't it? Um, is the sequence still arithmetic? Why or why not? Hit pause, jot down your thoughts on that, and hit play to keep going. So the sequence would still be arithmetic. Yes, it would. Um, the sequence would still be arithmetic because the common difference is still constant. I'm still just add four, add four, add four, add four. It's just a different number, but it's still doing the same thing. So yes, it would still be an arithmetic sequence. Um, if possible, I would like you to now write the first five terms of this new sequence. Remember that it starts with 11 and it now has a common difference of four. So hit pause, just write down your sequence real quick and hit play to keep going. So if I start with 11, but I'm adding five, then I'm gonna go 11 and I already got it wrong. That should be a 16. Oh, boo, Miss Scott. Miss Scott can't add very well. Never mind, she did add well. Five, so if I'm adding four, I start with 11, and you're right, I did do it right. If I add four, I get 15, and then I get 19, then 23, then 27. Wow, does it worry you that your math teacher can't add four? Maybe a little bit. That's okay. We all make mistakes. We're strong. It's all good. Um, so let's take a look at all of those sequences that you cut out in our getting started activity. Remember we had all those sequences that you cut out and we wrote down on them, um, what the pattern was and what the next couple terms were, right? We did that. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to take a look at these lovely sequences. And what I would like you to do is to find all of the sequences that are arithmetic. We're not gluing them in here just this point in time. We're not quite there yet. But these are all the sequences that you cut out from what was it, pages 109 and 111. Um, all the sequences that you cut out from pages 109 and 111 that we wrote down the patterns on. I would like you to go through and find all of the ones that are arithmetic, all of the ones that have a common difference. And I would just like you to put the letters in your workbook. We have a place to glue them in later, but for now, just write down the letters of the gra of the patterns that were arithmetic. So hit pause, go through, and then uh, jot it down, and hit play when you're ready to check your work and see how you did. So I looked through them, and I looked for anything that where the same number was being added or subtracted over and over and over again. So any of the sequences that I was like, I'm adding this every time, or I'm subtracting this every time, I pulled those out of my pile. And I found that B, E, H, K, and N all were arithmetic. They all either were adding the same thing every time or subtracting the same thing every time. Um, what I'd like you to do now is just take them and analyze them just a little bit deeper. And I'd like you to list off here on the page, on page 102, on number two, part B, um, just sequence B, give me the common difference, D equals. Remember, we're using D for difference. Um, so I would like you to give me each sequence, just jot down each sequence and tell me what that common difference is. Remember, if you're adding, your common difference should be positive. And if you're subtracting, your common difference should be negative. Go ahead and hit pause to jot all that down, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right, people, let's do this thing. So starting off with sequence B, because that was the first one that I plucked out, I noticed it had that I was adding two every time. So I said, fine, D equals two. For sequence E, it was a rougher one. We had a hard time with that one. 
Um, the com I was subtracting nine fourths every time. It was such a weird one. I was subtracting nine fourths every time. And so I said D equals negative nine fourths. Sequence H, I was add four, add four, add four, add four. So D equals four. Sequence K, I was subtract 1.5, subtract 1.5, subtract 1.5. So I said D equals negative 1.5. And for sequence n, I noticed we kept subtracting 20.5, subtracting 20.5 over and over again. So d equals negative 20.5. Makes sense. So hopefully you're feeling pretty good about what an arithmetic sequence is. It's when you have that common difference, when you're constantly adding the same number over and over and over again, or subtracting the same number over and over and over again. Positive if you're adding, negative if you're subtracting. So let's move on to our next set of bolded words. They're oh so important. Um, a geometric sequence. Mm -hmm. So a geometric sequence is a sequence of numbers in which the ratio between any two consecutive terms is a constant. Did that sound like a mouthful? It sure did. So in other words, it is a sequence of numbers and would you multiply each term by a constant to determine the next term? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're multiplying by the same thing every single time <coughs> or dividing, you can write it as a fraction. So if you're multiplying by the same thing every single time, then you are dealing with a geometric sequence. And this number, whether it's an integer or a fraction, this constant that we're multiplying by every single time is called the common ratio. And the common ratio is, of course, represented by the variable R for ratio. Yeah, that's how that goes. Now, again, this means that if you're multiplying by the same number every time or dividing by the same number every time, you're dealing with a geometric sequence. Just keep in mind that technically geometric sequences only multiply. So that means that if you're like the pattern is dividing, that just means you're going to be multiplying by a fraction, okay? Remember that division is the same thing as multiplying by a fraction. Multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two, all right? Okay, this is important because we're going to keep going. So to give you an idea, I, ha I have an example. Of course I have an example. Of course I have an example. So consider this lovely sequence shown. One, two, four, eight. The pattern is to multiply each term by the same number, two, to determine the next term, right? I start with a one. Multiply by two to get two. Multiply two by two to get four. Multiply by two to get eight. You see what's happening here, I know you do. So the sequence is geometric and the common ratio R is two. And there you go, there you go. So suppose, just like last time, suppose a sequence has the same starting number as this sequence up, up above here in the worked example, but, its common ratio is now three. So we're still gonna start with one, it's still gonna go that way, but now my common ratio, the thing that I'm multiplying by over and over and over again, is three. So tell me, how would that make my pattern change? Go ahead and hit your, thought. go ahead and put down your thoughts, hit pause, put down your thoughts, and then hit play when you're ready to check and see how you do it. All right, all right. So when I multiply by two, my pattern increases, like it gets bigger. But if I multiply by three, it gets bigger faster, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So my sequence would still increase, just now my sequence would increase more rapidly. Yes, it would. So let me ask you the next question then, if we do this with our common ratio of three, is the sequence still geometric? Make sure you explain your reasoning. Hit pause, jot down your thoughts. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. All 
So is the sequence still geometric? Yes, of course it is. The sequence is still geometric because the ratio between any two consecutive terms is constant. Fancy word for, yeah, it's geometric because we're still multiplying by a constant number over and over and over again. Common ratio, in this case, three. And of course, you know what's coming. Go ahead and write it down for me, given this new common ratio. We're still starting with one. We're still starting with one, but now we're going to a new common ratio of three. Please write down for me the first five terms of this lovely new sequence. I wrote down the first five terms. Did you? Starting off with a one, of course, if I multiply by three, one times three is three, three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And I was reaching a point where I needed a calculator because 27 times three is in fact 81. Most useful. Let's do this again. Still, uh, still, still playing with the same worked pattern here. So we're still gonna be starting with one. Let's just change the ratio, the common ratio again. So suppose the sequence has the same starting number as the sequence in that worked example. So we're still starting at one, but its common ratio is one third instead of three. <laughs> how would the pattern change? Jot down some of your thoughts on how the pattern might change and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So if you recall from earlier, um, a little bit ago, I said that one half was the same as dividing by two, didn't I? So that means one third, if I multiply by one third times one third times one third times one third, that's the same thing as dividing by three, which means that the pattern's really gonna change because my sequence is now going to decrease instead of increase because I'm dividing by three. My common ratio is one third. Oh my goodness. So here's another question. Is the sequence still geometric? Why or why not? Hit pause, jot down your thoughts, hit play when you're ready to check your work. You know what I'm about to tell you, right? You know what I'm about to tell you. Yes, it's still geometric. I still have a common ratio. I'm still multiplying by one third, one third, one third every time. So yes, the sequence is still geometric because that ratio between any two consecutive terms is still constant. I still have a common ratio. Oh my goodness. Oh, and this one, you may have to work for this. Um, please don't give me decimals. Please don't give me decimals. And in case you missed it, please don't give me decimals. Give me fractions if you don't mind, please. Starting with one, keep multiplying by one third and give me the first six terms of the new sequence. Go ahead and hit pause, work this out, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. I wrote them down. Did you? So one, to, one times one third is, well, one third. So I start with the one and then one third, but one third times one third is one ninth, times one third is one twenty seventh, times one third is one eighty first, times one third is one two hundred forty third. That's very small. That's really, that's really small. That's very small. Okay, then let me mess with you a little bit more. Geometric ratios, they're, they're fun. So now let's suppose that a sequence has the same starting number as that original worked example. So we're still starting with one, but now the common ratio is a negative two. How would the pattern change? Hit pause, jot down your thoughts, hit play when you're ready to continue this discussion. I don't know about you, but I was like, ooh, that pattern's going to change. Um, because the sequence, if I'm multiplying by a negative, you know how this goes. Um, a positive times a negative will give me a negative. But then I multiply by a negative again, which would make it a positive. But then I multiply by a negative again, which would make it a negative. And then I multiply by a negative again, which makes it a positive. Do you see what's happening here? 
This means my se sequence would decrease and increase to negative to positive to negative to positive. So with those alternating positive and negative integers. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's going to be bouncing all over the place. Darn negatives. Is the sequence still geometric? Explain your reasoning. Hit pause. Write it down. Hit play when you're ready to continue the discussion. Uh, yeah, it's still geometric. It's still geometric. The sequence is still geometric because the ratio between any two consecutive terms is still constant. Yes, my common ratio is now a negative. So what? It's still a common ratio. I'm still multiplying by the same thing every single time. So it is still a geometric sequence. And of course, this means I want you to write down for me the first six terms of the new sequence. So we're starting at one. And then you're going to use your common ratio of negative two. Hit pause to jot down the first six terms. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right, people, I did the first six terms, did you? So I started with one times a negative two is negative two times a negative two is a positive four times a negative two is a negative eight times a negative two is a 16 times a negative two is a negative 32. So again, it's doing that up, down, up, down, right? Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Oh my goodness gracious. And now I'm going to make you think. <laughs> I have to, it's part of the job. So consider this lovely sequence shown, uh, 270, 90, 30, 10, on and on and on. Devin says that he can determine each term of the sequence by multiplying each term by one third. So the common ratio is one third. Chase says that he can determine each term of the sequence by dividing each term by three. So the common ratio is three. Who is correct? Explain your reasoning. Hit pause, write it down. Hit play when you're ready to check your work. I'm sure Chase meant well. I am. But the truth is, Devin is correct. Devin is correct. The next term in the sequence can be determined by multiplying the previous term by one third. Now, to be fair, Chase is correct in that he can determine the, se uh, the next term in the sequence. Um, so he can determine the sequence by dividing the next term by three. He wasn't wrong about that, that you could divide by three, divide by three. But remember that the common ratio represents the number by which each term is multiplied. Each term in the sequence is not multiplied by three. It's actually multiplied by one third because we said that multiplying by one third is the same thing as dividing by three. And for a common ratio, you have to give me multiplication. There's no other way. Sorry. So, I mean, Chase wasn't totally wrong. Chase had a good idea going. He just had the wrong common ratio. It's all right. We got there. Devin knew what he was doing. It's all good. So um, here's what I want you to do. I'd like you to consider all those sequences that we cut out in our getting started activity. And I would like you to list the sequences that are geometric. And then I want you to write the common ratio on each sequence card. So write that common ratio on the card. I know we wrote down the pattern already, but I'd like you to write down the actual common ratio. So find all the ones that are geometric. That means anything that kept saying we were multiplying by the same number every time or dividing by the same number every time. And then on that card, write down the common ratio. So pull them out, figure out which ones you should be looking at for those geometric guys, and then write the common ratio on your geometric ones. Not all of them are, are geometric. That's okay. Find the ones that are. So go ahead and hit pause to take care of that and then hit play when you're ready to check your work.
All right, how you doing? Well, I went through my cards and I noticed that sequence A was times two times, was multiplied by two. That was our pattern, times two times two times two. So fine, sequence A is geometric, R equals two. Um, I also discovered that sequence C, it was multiplied by three was our pattern, times three times three times three. So my common ratio, R equals three. Yay. Um, sequence F, now maybe you thought of it as dividing by 10, um, or I think we wrote it as times 0 0.1. So I'm going to say that, yes, it's geometric because the same thing was happening each time. But I'm also going to say that R equals 0 0.1. If you put that R equals 1 tenth, that's okay too. It's just weird because it was a decimal. And the big thing of fractions and decimals gets weird. Sequence J. So for sequence J, we were either, you could either think of it as dividing by two every time or multiplying by one half. So for sequence J, it was geometric and R equals one half. I found one more, um, I'm not one more, there's actually two more. I found another one in sequence M. Um, sequence M was tricky, but we did finally figure out that it was getting multiplied by negative one fourth. Maybe you thought of it as dividing by a negative four, that's okay. It just means R equals negative one fourth. And for sequence P, this is the last one I found. For sequence P, I was like, hey, that's getting multiplied by negative three. So fine, it's geometric and R equals negative three. Hooray. So it looks like we managed to find in our cutouts, we managed to find five arithmetic sequences and six geometric sequences. It's not bad. Um, but there were others, right? There, there were other sequences that didn't make either of our lists. So I would like you to consider these other sequences that we have from our cutouts. Um, that were neither arithmetic or geometric. And I'd like you to just list the sequences here on page 105 and explain why these sequences are neither arithmetic nor geometric. You go ahead and hit pause, jot that down, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So um, the other sequences that just didn't fall into either category of arithmetic or geometric, those would be sequences D, G, L, and O. And they are neither arithmetic nor geometric because there was no common difference or common ratio for any of these sequences. They had a pattern. They definitely had a pattern. They all had patterns, but not add the same thing, add the same thing, add the same thing, or times the same thing, times the same thing, times the same thing. And there wasn't a common difference or common ratio for any of these sequences. So um, we're going to toss those four out. Wow, all that work. And we're just going to chuck them. But yeah, so sequences D, G, L, and O. You were the weakest link. Goodbye. Don't leave me yet. We're not done yet. We're close, but we're not done yet. Um, so stick around with me. I got just a few more things to make you think. So consider the first two terms of the sequence three, six, dot, dot, dot. Dante says, this is how I wrote the sequence for the given term. So since it started with three and six, Dante continued it, three, six, nine, twelve. Kira says, well, this is the sequence I wrote. And she wrote three, six, twelve, twenty-four. So the question is, who is correct? Explain your reasoning. Hit pause, jot that down, hit play when you're ready to discuss. So who is correct? Well, the truth is they both are. Yeah, they're both right. Dante assumed the sequence was arithmetic with a common difference of three. Add three, add three, add three, add three, which makes sense, right? Three plus three gives me six. Okay, I can see that math. But Kira assumed the, the a sequence was geometric with a common ratio of two. And that makes sense. Three times two would give me six. So times two times two times two times two. So they actually are both correct. We're going to skip questions 10 and 11. We're just going to jump down to one last little thing to make you think, and that is question number 12. So consider this sequence. Two, 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 dot, dot, dot. 
Identify this type of sequence, arithmetic, geometric, all that good stuff. Identify the type of sequence it is and describe the pattern. Hit pause, jot down your thoughts, hit play to check your work. All right. All right, so I actually had a bunch of thoughts. I thought, well, sequence could be arithmetic with the common difference of zero, right? Plus zero, plus zero, plus zero, plus zero. That's a possibility. I then thought, well, 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 wait, the sequence could be geometric with a common ratio of one, right? Times one, times one, times one, times one. And then I thought, you know what? I might just be overthinking this. The sequence could be neither with the term two just repeating itself over and over again. That's also possible. So uh, a lot of different ways of looking at this, aren't there? But hopefully by now, you have now got a better understanding of what makes a sequence arithmetic and what makes a sequence geometric. And I hope you found this helpful and useful as always. And of course, if you've got any questions or concerns, please email me, ask questions when you come back to class, or pop in during office hours. I'll see you soon. Bye.